Greetings and welcome to Try Hard Mode. I'm Mark and in this, our second devlog of our detective game, we will show you the new shader we'll use to handle transparencies, the improvements we've added to our NPC interaction and dialogue system, the latest upgrades to our combat system and enemies, as well as new ragdolling mechanics when in collision with certain objects. All of these coming up next. Alright, let's review the second episode or second devlog of our detective game and also we're going to try to make this video a little more to the point and avoid wasting so much time on minor details as I normally do. Let's start with the progress with the transparency mechanics of the visual obstacles in our scene, which we had briefly explained in the previous video, that it worked like a sphere which made us lose in the central part of our objects in order to see our character through. This week we've changed the mechanic a little and instead of using a sphere, we created a new shader that works as follows. We have a collider that has its origin in the head of our character and is a cylinder that extends to the current position of our main camera orbiting around him. And the moment that collider makes contact with any element that has the detailing layer. At that moment, the code will save in a list all the subjects with which it's making contact. And in update, with each frame, our code will reduce the transparency value in our shader down to a set value, which is going to be our minimum transparency. This way, we can make the elements mostly see-through, but at the same time, we still get to see them a little bit to know that they are still there, that there is an obstacle and that we cannot walk through. This is how it works, and the moment the same collider leaves or stops making contact with these elements, our code will remove them from the tethering list and put them instead in a new list which will be responsible for returning the shader value of each one of those objects to their starting value, so that they return to the state as we saw them before. So now we can explore these alleys, and we can go into combat without having to worry about the position of the camera, and keeping the game dynamic. But at the same time, it allows us to have those vertical elements that are the buildings and this setting without causing any issues. Right now, we have incorporated this shader into the tallest buildings of the scene. We did not use it on the poles or trees because we did not think it necessary. They don't seem to hinder the visibility enough. But we put it in these walls that we also use to separate areas and also to the elements of the construction site. This way we can explore freely the lower levels, we can enter combat, look for clues, and automatically, as we move, the obstacles will get removed and fade away from our range of vision. This allows us to move faster through the scene. We still need to test this in combat, and with the main mechanics that we'll use in the game, but at least it's already on an acceptable state, and we hope that it only requires minor adjustments. Overall, we really like how the shader worked out, and will be quite useful not only in this game, but I'm sure we'll be using it in other games in the future. By the way, this shader works based on meshes, so as you can see when we touch the mesh of this object, the whole object becomes translucent, so it took us some time to adjust all the meshes and models on the scene so that the shader runs correctly, but we're quite happy with the results. Besides that, we also worked on the interaction and dialogue system with our NPCs, in addition to the text box that we had previously. 
We've already included one of Ellie's new NPCs with the new animations. And now, as soon as we enter a conversation with these characters, in addition to the text box, we already have audio that goes in hand with the conversation when it starts and the stops when it ends. And also, the SIM code in our NPC can change the priority of the cameras so that we can create these transitions and framing with Cinemachine. We still need to adjust the transitions a bit, they still look a little rough, but at least the code already works correctly. We are also now able to trigger, with each conversation box, the animation that we want in our NPC. From the 9 or 10 new animations Ellie created, our NPC can use the animation that we want with each dialogue to give it a little more personality and make the interaction feel more natural. And a little more complex similar to those of Zelda games or Animal Crossing. And with this, we already have a little more developed NPC interactions. What is going to be missing from our last devlog that we couldn't get done this week is to improve our UI and the effects of our recorder and how the events get triggered. I'm going to be working on that next week and on introducing more NPCs to the scene which are going to be the ones to move the story along and how the game is going to be unfolding. We'll also be working on incorporating combat into the main scene and bringing the game to a state that allows us to play test all these mechanics at the same time and not only develop the game, but also to be making the necessary adjustments as we go to make the results more fun. But let's review other areas that Ellie's been working on besides these characters and animations, but for the time being, that's the state of the main scene and the mechanics we've incorporated for the moment. In addition to working on characters and animations, Ellie was also in charge of improving our combat system and already added a knockback to our enemies when taking damage and also fixed the problem we had with our colliders in the previous video. Finally, Ellie has been experimenting with our characters to implement ragdolls within the game's mechanic. It's still in an early stage, but eventually we want to include this mechanic to use when colliding with cars or other vehicles that drive through the streets of our city or also in combat when we or the enemies take damage from an explosion it may also be interesting to use when receiving a special attack from a boss or some other type of damage that presents a high risk but well, that's what we'll be working on next week. We'll be adding, just as always, all the tutorials we use in the description of this video. And if you're interested in our content and would like to follow up our projects, we invite you to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps us a lot. For our part, that will be all. Just to wish you, as always, to have an excellent week and a lot of success in your projects.